everybody. Oh, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, the title today is Less is More. Um, before I get started, I'd really like to give my thanks, huge thanks to Derek, Derek Stradham in Jeffreys Bay, who's really coordinated and put this whole thing together. Um, those of you who know me now are very untechnical, and so I couldn't do it without Derek. Thank you so much. I'd also like to thank my daughter, Linda. A lot of you will know Linda, and um, she's very kindly assisting me with um, the camera today and handing me, you know, and being my assistant. So um, a big thank you. Um, a lot of you will know that I'm passionate about Ikebana and it's been a lifetime um, passion of mine. I follow the Sagetsu School. I'm a Riji teacher in the Sagetsu School. And um, I just find at the moment with, we're in another lockdown, I think it's our third wave and the third big lockdown. It's winter time here. People are quite depressed and down and low. So um, there aren't many flowers around. And so I thought this would be a good title to do less is more. And to show you that you can actually do an arrangement with very little. So um, as of first off, I've done this little arrangement and it really stems from many years ago I was at a dinner party and somebody asked about Ikebana and I started to explain and he said, oh, that's for the twig and a flower. And I was quite put out, but in actual fact, you can make a very nice arrangement with a twig and a flower. This um, flower is called Sukuma. It's um, part of the ginger family and um, it grows well um, through the spring and into the summer. And um, so I guess now that we're in winter, it's coming to the end, but they still look amazing. So it's just to illustrate that the twig is off uh, Petria. A lot of you will have Petria in the garden and you get lovely twisty shapes. So I'm always looking out for special little twigs and bits. So Less is more. Now today I'm trying to, well, I am using everything from my garden. I haven't gone out and bought any flowers so that you can see that one can use what's around and in your, your neighborhood. And today I'm using magnolia. The magnolia is very pretty. Um, it flowers at this time of the year, it likes the winter. But I have to say that the, I always forget the name of these birds, the purple crested turaku. Um, some of you might know it like me and call it the Lowry. <laughs> Um, but they also love it and they come and they nibble all the buds. So I'm always battling against the tide with them. So today I thought um, it's quite a traditional sort of um, material to use magnolia. You get wonderful shapes and I'm not going to use all of this. I cut quite a few branches so that I've got a choice. Um, I love this particular branch because it's got such lovely movement and the flower dropped, which was not very helpful of it, but um, I'm going to use this today as, and you'll notice I'm cutting underwater. This helps to keep um, the water coming into the plant. If it's a very woody stem, you'll notice that I'm cutting 
into the stem as well so that it's easy to put onto the pin holder. I've got a pin holder in here, which is like this, and um, we call it a Kenzan, which means a mountain of pins or a mountain of spears. So working with two moon arrangements, I want to have the movement of it coming through. And then I'll just trim off any untidy little bits. And then you see even a bud is so beautiful. Now, what I did with these, I picked them yesterday and I put them into hot water. Yes, hot water. So I take a jug like this out into the garden when I'm going to cut and I put boiling water from the kettle just to this sort of height. Then as they cut from the tree, they go into the hot water and then they're there for about five, six minutes. I come inside, add cold water, and give them a good drink. And then you'll find that they'll last really well. Oops. So there you can see it's a quite an effective arrangement using flowers literally from the garden. So um, the double moon also gives depth and a 3D effect to the arrangement. Oh, that's a good idea. Can you see it against the wall? Good. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. What happened to the little clock? Right, for my third arrangement, um, this is a rather special container. I'm going to stand aside so that you can see it. Um, it's a traditional Japanese bronze container. Um, it does have a, another little tray that can sit in that you can put a pin holder into, but I've removed that so that it's just literally like a cylinder. Those of you who watched my last demonstration, it was called Fun with Nagiri. So this would be considered a Nagiri container. Now, for this arrangement, oh, and I also wanted to say, with this um, container, let me put some water in while I'm speaking. And um, I've actually put a cross stick. So it's literally just a, a stick that I'm putting across and fitting, wedging it in so that it gives a firm, it divides like that, you can see. Now, um, then I'm going to use that to stabilize this leaf. And I want it to be a little bit rounded. So very gently 
you can bend it. Um, and this is where I say you've got to be relaxed when you do Ekavana. There's no doing it when you're uptight because it'll go ping, it'll snap. <laughs> so just very gently bending it. You can feel it um, in, in the inside of the stem moving. And then also to carry on with the story of this beautiful container, it was given to me by a Japanese ambassador who was here about 30 years ago. And it was very sad that whilst he was here on his tour of duty, his wife passed away. And um, when he left, he gave me this vase and he said, please use it whenever you have an exhibition, um, use it in a demonstration in memory of my wife. So I'm doing it in memory of her today. Right, so I put the leaf in and it's settled at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is to make a little slit oops, in the leaf. I said to my daughter before the demonstration, I won't need my glasses, will I? <laughs> and now I'm beginning to wonder. And then I'm going to thread this through. Only they here, darling. Yeah, let me get my glasses. I think I do need them. Um, This is a um, polygala, which is a very pretty creeper. And um, you get it in white and in this beautiful lilac shade. And then this is a little phalaenopsis, which is just actually going over on the plant. But I thought the colors tied up very well today. So I'm hoping to fit it in as well. So in fact, the mechanics are literally the leaf um, in the container like that. Oh, it's not allowed to flop. <laughs> Even if it flops down a little bit, it'll still balance with the colors. So let me show you, let me move aside. So there again, less is more. It's very little. Right, then, um, at this time of the year, I find with winter days and um, we've been promised a very cold snap. So I thought let's do something quite wintry today. And therefore I chose this white, beautiful white glass container. And with it, I'm going to add lichen branches. These are very pretty. And some of you might have thought, oh my goodness, I must cut that out of the tree and throw it away. But I think this lichen is just so attractive. So I'm going to use it as the mechanics to hold the, the flowers in position. So literally, um, 
lay it on and make sure that it's quite stable because this now is going to hold your flowers. And for the flowers, I thought most of us have petunias in the garden and we tend to forget about them. They're in a hanging basket, they're in a pot, they're in the flower bed. But when they're cut, they actually are amazingly beautiful and they last so well. So we're going to use white ones. Again, following on the winter theme. And you see, they're really quite attractive. See? Shows how stable it is. <laughs> Just going to trim off some of the leaves. And then using the, the lichen branches as your mechanics, you can fit them in. And you see, it gives you height. And of course, we get petunias in all different colors. So um, even if you had colors, it would be very attractive. That one looks a little sad. Don't want any sad flowers. So make sure that the stems come down and are in the water. It's always quite a good idea with an arrangement like this. In fact, it could be an all round viewing. You see, it looks good from all around. So it could be ideal for a coffee table, for an entrance hall, something like that. And um, I always found it's quite helpful to have something at the back of an arrangement. I'm just putting a, a fern leaf here because it makes your eye travel through and it gives depth to the arrangement. So I hope you'll agree that that is less is more. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Now, most of you will have been for walks along the beach, along the rivers, whatever, and picked up driftwood. This is an ideal example of a piece of driftwood. It's a very hard wood and it's quite smooth. It's been totally weathered by the water and the sun. And um, it just, I, I, I think um, driftwood is such a wonderful medium to work with. But today we're going to have a little bit of fun with it and I've painted one um, which is quite exciting and I've done it an electric blue and um, my daughter thought it looked like a dragon I think it looks a bit like a fish in other ways it looks a bit like a bird it just makes your imagination run wild so that's the, the wood, and then um, we're going to put it on a little vase. Um, I'm going to put this on the corner of the table. In fact, I'll leave it in the middle and then move it so you can see it. And I'm using a blue container, which is rather um, pretty. It's got a lovely classical style shape. And I'm putting it onto this white base because I want it to lift the color 
and um, put it off center so that that will balance. And I think even without flowers, it's quite exciting. So I love the shape and the movement and just the fact that you can look at it and your imagination can run wild. And then we're going to finish it off with these very exotic um, Asian lilies. I noticed they actually don't show up so well against the black. They are so dark, but they're just incredibly beautiful. And they have a perfect scent. They have a very pretty scent. And that's why you'll see why I put it onto a white base. So literally, it's the two flowers and the wood. And then I'm going to move to the side, and hopefully you can see that less is more. We all have bits of wood that we can paint and just give it a new life. Thank you. Right, and then um, I thought also most of us have dishes, plates, platters tucked away in our cupboards that don't ever see the light of day or get used. I'm a terrible one for that. And, um, and then um, I thought I'd show you, this is a particularly beautiful leaf-shaped container um it's portuguese pottery you know they i think it's a dying art now they used to have a pottery that did these wonderful um plates done in the shape of leaves cabbage lettuce that sort of thing and this is just an exquisite container but it's rather large and a little bit difficult to know what to do with it so i thought we'd use it today and um I need a little water in it. So I'm actually going to use, we call this a well kenzan. You could use a tin, um, like a tuna tin, salmon tin, and put your little pin holder inside. And then again, you'll see I've been very busy with the paint. And these are very useful to have just done in your store cupboard. I've done this, I think, at Christmas time. So it was white and it's hawthorn and it's got wonderful shapes and um, movement in it. So I'm going to combine it with this plate. I don't think, maybe I'll need that little one too. That will give a little bit of height. That's actually quite nice. And the beauty of the hawthorn is you can hook it all together. And then with it, I'm going to use these phalaenopsis. Um, I found with the phalaenopsis, and you're probably far better at keeping them alive than I am, but I found after a couple of months or three months or so, they begin to start to flag. They, they start to curl up and look a little bit tired. So I cut them. I learned this trick that if you cut them and put them into a nice deep drink of water, like overnight, they will pick up and they'll last for another well, these have been going for another two weeks and they're still looking amazing. So um, on the plant, you would have said, oh, no, they've, they've gone. They, they're not looking great. So uh, the same with these. And it's quite interesting that I seem to have a purple theme today. That was totally unintentional. Um, perhaps it's just a sign of 
winter days. So again, very simple. It's what I had in the house and um, it gives you another, it'll last beautifully because obviously the sticks won't um, give up and the, the flowers will last as long as you keep them topped up with water. So again, less is more. Let me just show you against the, the wall so you can see. Good, thank you. Perfect. Right, then I thought, oh, I always get somebody who says, but I've got no flowers in the garden, or I'm in a flat, or there's always, you know, that I haven't got. And then I thought, well, what can we do? So I had the idea of doing vegetable carving. And you can make flowers from onion or vegetables, turnips, that sort of thing. So I'm going to show you just a little few ideas today. And this is the lotus. And I'm using, it's a little bit tall, I think. I'm using loquat leaves, which give a lovely glossy feel. This can be used when you're having a dinner party, a lunch party, something like that, and you just want a bit of decoration and it goes well with the theme of the day. Then I've done some little lotus buds. Again, this is done with onion. And, um, oh, I had some toothpicks. Oh, here they are. You put a toothpick into having carved it. I haven't got time to carve it today. That'll be a whole nother lesson. And then with the toothpick, that gives a little stem. And then I'm using a reed here, which you just pop the, it into, and then that gives you a little stem to arrange it. I'm not going to put water in there because it doesn't really need water. Um, we don't bring that down a little bit. And then with that, we're going to do the chrysanthemum. And that is quite exciting. We use an onion again. And... Um, I'll show you one that I've done that I'm going to use in an arrangement. So it looks quite realistic. So how we do it is choose an onion. And it's quite funny because, you know, at the vegetable shop, you use, usually find people are looking for the fattest, the biggest, the this. I was looking for one with the right shape to do a lotus flower or an onion. And then um, take off the outer skin. <laughs> ah, I did this, I peeled most of it off yesterday because I thought now it seems to got, have got stuck. Here we go. So we don't want the brown outer. We just want a nice, clean onion.
And then you've cut it and you can cut it as finely as you possibly can and then separate the petals as it were like that. And at this stage, um, I would put it into, oh dear, I obviously went through too far. <laughs> Then put it into a bowl of cold water, so cold water with ice, and then you'll find that it opens up quite nicely. I did these a couple of days ago, and you'll see that they opened up quite dramatically. And in the center, I just put a little bit of um, yellow. I thought I wanted a little bit of color just to lift it. And so I used a bit of butternut, just cut like even thinner than a matchstick, just to give like the little yellow stamens as it were. Um, it's not exactly botanically correct, but it gets the message. And then for that, I'm going to use these slatted bases. You could use a plate or another oriental platter if you wanted. And then I'm going to combine it with some pine because um, whenever I've been in Japan, I'm so, I get so excited with the pine. I love the short needled pine that grows in Japan. And this is the closest I can get to it here in Zimbabwe. And this is called a deodar pine. So again, um, I'm doing this so that I get a little bit of height, that it's not too flat. I'd actually cut this bit to start with. I'll just show you. Um, and I felt it was very flat. It just doesn't have the same movement. Right, so now we're going to add the chrysanthemum. And this is when you've got no flowers. <laughs> and again, following on the lilac um, purple theme, I've done this with a red onion and it had green in the center, which is really quite pretty. So I'm leaving that as it is. And then there's another little one. Yeah. So that literally, I'll just hold it up a little so you can see, is when you have no flowers, you can make your own flowers with the onion. And just to add to the decor, we'll have a little bowl. and the chopsticks, and then I can invite you to come and have lunch. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed the demonstration today. Less is more. It's been a fun time, I think. And um, some of you, I think, already follow me on my Instagram page, and you'll probably see some of these arrangements in the next few days. Thank you so much for joining me today and go well and keep safe. Thank you.